What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Kick back, relaxing. Come take a ride with me. So, some unfortunate news for the United States on the basketball front. The U19 team that was competing in the World Cup for Team USA just finished in fourth place in the tournament. That's right, fourth place. Spain took the championship, and you check out the scene. This is typically where we're used to seeing Team USA raise the banners, get the gold medals, celebrate, do all that good stuff. But not today. Not this time. Spain took home the title. They took home the World Cup. They take home the championship. Now, Team USA lost to France in the semis. They almost lost to Slovenia. They lost to France in the semis the first time in our country's history of, of losing to France at the youth level. They lose to France and then get smacked around by Turkey in the fourth place game. Now, there's a lot that's being said about this team, especially in the Twitter universe, just talking about how this may have not been the most talented group that they could have chose the deepest group, or maybe two in my opinion, the pieces just didn't fit all that well together. And Coach Boyle and the staff, those guys as well, it falls on them to get the best out of this group and help them gel, build that chemistry. Way, way, way too much iso ball. It felt like everything was one-on-one. -on -one. There weren't a lot of assists happening. And to be honest, man, the effort, it just looked like they were too cool for school at times, especially when... You realize it's a, you're in a consolation game. Like, I get it, but you still repping that USA. You still got to go out there and hoop. And they absolutely did not show up. They got by on their athleticism and just being more talented than certain teams when they beat the breaks off Japan. You know what I'm saying? They beat, they went through pool play. And like I said, they almost lost to Slovenia. Didn't end up dropping that game. It was close. They had to make a fourth quarter comeback, man. They ended up falling to France. And I just want to say, before we get into this, there was a lot of talent on that group. Like, I know people are saying this isn't the most talented group. That's not a knock. I mean, there was a, there's a lot of talent on this group. Dylan Harper, Asa Newell, Ian Jackson, Trey Johnson. We're talking about some of the most highly touted kids in the 2024 class. And... Arguably, it could be. I don't want to, you know, it's still early in the process, but potential lottery picks we're naming off right there. Then you got Cody Williams, class of 2023, one of the few 2023 prospects on this team to be featured. Going to take the league by storm next year in Colorado, take the Pac-12 league by storm. But he was one of the guys that was, you know, 2023 class going in. You just look at this team initially and you notice there's no Isaiah Collier. There's no Bronny James. There's no Ron Holland. That was a major name that was just kind of surprising not to see on there. You don't have Ron Holland, arguably. Holland, arguably the number, I mean, he's, he's number one in the mock drafts right now for NBA Draft 2024. Arguably the most talented prospect, 19 new prospect in the country, in the world. Like, the kid is the goods, you know, and you have an alpha like him who can go and get a bucket, but it's also a proven winner at every stage. And then you get a floor general like Collier, who they, obviously, they needed a true point guard. It just was not out there for them, someone to initiate the offense and get other people involved. That was sorely lacking, just like the defensive rotations as well, sorely lacking. But you look at it, and it's like guys like that, we're not on the roster, and it was surprising. The Jared McCain's, the Caleb Foster's of the world, like just a lot of guys that could have been on this team that may have made a difference that, you know, were more suited for this competition, just were not on the roster. And I think Team USA has to do a better job. It's on them of recruiting and convincing these guys and making a pitch to them to try to come because I get the crowd of, oh, you know, there are a lot of guys that are trying to prepare for college. I get that. I totally get that, and I totally understand, and I'm not knocking anybody for that. But my thing is, Cody Williams played. They got him to play, and he's a five-star prospect, McDonald's All-American. You know, all the accolades going in and sacrificed his summer to play for this team. And still, the, the, the tournament's over. 
by June, the end of June, you know, July, July, the, the tournament's over. Now you have a couple months to go back before the season, a few months to go back before the college season and get right. But it just trips me up that guys that they could have used on this roster, this obviously, obviously wasn't the best team that Team USA could have sent from the 19U ranks. Let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Honestly, just looking at the tape, man, you could see it. The team just, it didn't look like a team effort. It did not look like they gelled well together. And that's tough sometimes when you're putting together 10 to 12 kids that haven't played with one another a whole lot and you're trying to get them to buy into a system and one goal, which is to win a gold medal. They had struggles the entire tournament. I mean, defensive rotations were weak. They were getting smoked with backdoor cuts, screens. Rotations were late. They were off. The guys looked lost at times. Like, And that's on the coaching staff just as much as the players. You know what I'm saying? That, that they had some college coaches on there, guys with a lot of experience. Coach Boynton, there's a lot of guys that had experience on this team that coaching-wise have coached some huge games at the highest levels. And they just did not get the best out of this group, flat out. And it showed, man. They got dominated. And they were an undersized group, too, man. And they got dominated. They honestly got dominated in the paint. And it just, they looked outmatched and outmanned, man. Honestly, the the international guys came to freaking play. And there's a lot of kids on those rosters that are playing professional in their respective countries. So you got to respect that off the string. A lot of Team USA rosters are rising seniors going to the senior prom next year coming up. Like, it was a difference. It was a discrepancy in talent. And I want to say, too, I got to get this off. For the people that the crowd, oh, the gap is closing, let's just remember Cam Whitmore, Anthony Black, and Scoot Henderson could have played on this team. They were age eligible to play on this squad. I'm just saying. So it could have got real spooky real quick. But I digress. I, I do think that, I mean, with Team USA, we know in every international competition, they're going to take every team's best punch. That's just the way it goes. It's the Super Bowl for some teams to beat Team USA, especially when these tournaments have been going on for years and years and years. And they've never, like a country like France, has never beaten Team USA in this competition. That's their Super Bowl, bro. Like, that's major for them. And we see the talent come out of France. They just had two lottery picks come out of there. So it's no disrespect, you know. Um, arguably the best player in the tournament, Azan Almanza Perez. Playing for Spain, led them, tournament MVP, led them to the title. Just signed with the G League Ignite. Team, who's going to be teammates with a guy like Ron Holland. You know, Ron Holland not playing in the tournament, but his teammate is. And, I mean, this is not an attack on anybody. Like I said again, Team USA has to do a better job of pitching these guys on these tournaments and recruiting the elite talent for these age groups, the best of the best. And that's no shade to Johnson or Harper or Newell or Williams or any of those guys for that matter. You know, this was a talented group of kids. They just were not the best team at the tournament and arguably not the best team. And this was also an example of what happens when politics and friendships and relationships get in between the game and what should be and what shouldn't be. When you got politics playing a role of keeping certain kids off the team, and there were kids in the past that had won with the younger groups of Team USA that were not permit, permitted on this team, which is crazy to me as well, not bringing that experience. They needed a floor general, man. They needed leadership. They needed somebody to really come in and set the tone. And that didn't happen. And now you look at it, and they're going home with a fourth-place finish. Do I think the gap is closing? Maybe a little bit, but, I mean, we just saw the U16 team beat everybody by, like, 30, so... You know, uh, uh, I'm not buying too much into it. I just think that Team USA has to do a better job of 
recruiting the young talent and pitching these guys and getting them into the system. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not always about just pure talent, though. I think it's also about team fit, and we're seeing that with the national team, the senior national team that just got named today looking at the roster. Obviously, some familiar faces. I love the backcourt with guys like Jalen Brunson and Tyrese Halliburton, floor generals that are going to be able to initiate the offense and get people the ball. We got athleticism, Anthony Edwards, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram. You got the shooters in the house, Cam Johnson, Mikael Bridges, Austin Reeves, Paulo Bancaro is going to be a freaking problem, very versatile. They are small, though, but I still, I mean, you know, maybe not so much. Bobby Portis, Walker Kessler, Jaron Jackson, some versatility. They're going to be able to shoot the ball. They got defenders out there. They're going to be able to spread the floor. They got point guards to initiate it. Like, when you look at all that, when you got those guys on the wings, Edwards, Reeves, Brunson, you got shot makers, Halliburton, the floor general, you got Josh Hart, Mikael Bridges, who can do both 3 and D guys. Mikael can really just do it all, though, and he'll probably be the best player on this team. I ain't going to hold you. But And then you got Brandon Ingram, who's versatile, can play the 3 and the 4. I love the pieces that this group has right now. I think they'll gel really well. No, this isn't a bunch of home run, hit A-league type talents, but these are really, really good players. I mean... We're talking about border, some all-stars, some borderline all-stars, guys that can really get after it. This is actually a really good team, bro. Like, I've been seeing a lot of shade, and I'm kind of confused because this is actually a pretty damn good roster when you look at the makeup and how these pieces have the potential to pair together. And we get a look at the World Cup roster. They're going into battle, and this will arguably probably be the Olympics roster as well going into next year. But I'm excited, man. I mean, you got defenders, you got shooting, you got bigs, you got athleticism, you got versatility, you got initiators of the offense, lead ball handlers, a floor, floor generals out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, this team is really good. I'm excited to see them get after it, to be honest with you. So, we'll see, man. Competition starting up soon, so we'll get our look over the next two months, man. It's exciting, and we absolutely will have a video, another video dropping today about the Mary Women's Cup, the Mary Cup coming up. Angel Reese leading Team USA, Raven Johnson, a lot of talent on those on that team as well. They're kicking things off. They got their second game today, so we'll have another video after that game talking about the lady side of things, getting to it. As for us, though, that's a wrap, man. For all the latest and the greatest, make sure to hit that subscribe button. What you waiting on? It's free, right? I'm your host, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. This is live with Brandon Blakeney. Until next time, hey, y'all. We out.